Good morning. Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. Today is a, it's another big day. I've got plans. Um, in a little while, we're gonna, Bill and I are gonna head into Worcester and pick up our order from the REC, the Regional Environmental Council. REC is great. Um, their mission is about teaching people to grow food and doing it in Worcester, which is, I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's quite a, quite a town. It's got this really great urban environment um, where a lot of things are happening. So, but you know, it's tricky to garden in the city, right? And the REC makes that easier for people. They teach folks how to do it and they sell seedlings every year. I just, I just love them. So we're gonna head in there. And then when we get home, y'all, it's time to plant some tomatoes. Good morning, darling birds. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, darling birds. Did I mention we got the girls out yesterday, finally? Finally! No more birds in my guest room. <laughs> the, uh, the cat who considered that his bedroom, Gunter, is absolutely thrilled he's back in there this morning hanging out on the couch um sleeping away like a sweet boy yay um <laughs> they're not the brightest in the bunch how i do love them so but this morning when i went to get them out of the coop instead of coming down the ramp where you know there's an open space into the run they were pecking at the window trying to get out so we, we got that, we wooed them down with a little bit of chicken scratch and they're pretty happy over there now. Um, Joker's on the prowl. He can't get it into the coop and he's really annoyed about that. <laughs> but he's an elderly gentle cat. Um, he's pushing 17 or 18 now and he's, he's not gonna get in that coop. He was asking me for a pair of wire cutters yesterday. He was all like, yeah, I would love that. A pair of wire clippers. And if you could just get in there for me and open that up, I'd love to have some chicken. <laughs> Look at these silly birds. So it is the 15th of May, hooray. <laughs> it's a little bit past our last frost date, so I'm feeling encouraged. I'm super excited. Um, can you see all these babies behind me? Can you see? I got some nonsense needs to go into the ground and I'm so excited about it. Let me get you in closer so you can see what's happening here. All right, so let's begin with the popcorn. I don't know if we're actually gonna get this in today. I had plans for a spot for them and it's not clear yet, so we'll have to see. So over here, we've got some tomatillos and some shishito peppers. I don't know if I'm gonna put the peppers in today, but maybe, maybe. Um, lavender and chamomile tomatoes they spent their first night outdoors so they're looking a little a little draggledy but i think that's okay i think that's okay i think they're just thirsty and getting them in the ground is going to help that so those will be nice bunch of pastes a uh, good slicer and a nice cherry-ish and then i've got marigolds cosmos nasturtiums Eggplant and patchouli. And then we've got some dill, some cilantro, some borage, hollyhocks that my neighbor gave me seeds from hers last year. And then sunflowers. I've got a rogue zinnia down there. And then the leftover pansies, some more patchouli. A little more chamomile. I really overplanted chamomile. And hops. 
just for kicks. I think I'm most excited this year about the tomatoes. I picked primarily paste tomatoes because I want to preserve with them. So last year I did two things that we used so much in cooking. I use a lot of crushed tomatoes and I use a lot of Rotel. So I did a take on Rotel. I called it Fotel, you know, because I'm clever like that. Um, anyway, <laughs> I'm going to be planting a ton of tomatoes and peppers this year. So for tomatoes, let's see what we got here. These guys in the front are... These are Lucky Tiger tomatoes. Oh my gosh, they are so ready to go in the ground. Um, these are Lucky Tiger tomatoes. They should have a little bit of a stripe to them. They'll be orange and green um, and yellow. And they're lovely. And then I picked up... Let me just bring you in. These ones in the back here, these are Costaludos. They're gonna be a slicing tomato. It's an accordion ribbed tomato. I've never grown these before. I'm looking forward to seeing what they come out like. You gotta have a good slicer because tomato sandwiches during summer and spring, oh, oh sister, tomato sandwiches. That's all I've got to say about that. Um, and the rest over here are San Marzano's and Hungarian heart tomatoes. So those are gonna be our paste tomatoes. They're thick walled um, and I can't wait to cook with them and turn them into something delightful. Last year we did our final harvest in October and then was canning forever. <laughs> canning all the way to, to November. And um, we finished up the last jars of green beans Fotel and tomatoes probably in February, mid-February. So not too bad, but I definitely want to do more this year. I'd like that to, to linger on a little bit through the cold months. Um, it's always nice to cook something. And I use most of those tomatoes for dishes that are stews or soups. So I want them during the cold months. And that's what we're going to do. Oh, hey, Joker. Good morning, Joker. Goodbye, Joker. So I'm going to pick out some spots for that. We have a big bunch of mulch. I know we said we were going to chip our own stuff right into the garden, but finding a wood chipper is darn near impossible this season. So it's going to be hump a mulch for a little while. We just, we can't get a wood chipper. This has been maddening. Um, so Bill ordered the mulch. It should show up today while we're in the city grabbing that REC order. And he's gonna put that onto the garden directly and then we're just gonna spread that apart and plant into the compost. So that'll keep the weeds down and get us back on track to where we wanna be for this summer. So I'm gonna run into town and go get my seedlings and I will catch you up in a little bit. We'll get this stuff planted out. So Bill's moving all the mulch in by the cart full. Okay, so Bill obtained for us, I think it was like either six or eight cubic yards of this brown cow mulch, which is fantastic stuff. It's got composted manure mixed right into it. Oh, no. so. so we're putting it on the garden. I'm putting it right on top of the straw. And this is gonna serve a couple of really great purposes. One of them is I completely put in the onions wrong. You're supposed to put them in in rows so that you can fertilize in between. 
and I blew it. <laughs> we put in those onions. You saw us put in those onions. They're all higgledy piggledy. Um, so what I'm hoping is some of the composted manure from the mulch will seep in there, get some good compost tea in, um, and get some nitrogen to those onions. I want to show you something else I found, which is freaking hilarious. Do you remember when I was like, oh, these carrots, forget these carrots. I'm putting in beets, right? You remember that? Check out this stuff. Remember those carrots? Look at that, y'all. They're all over the place. There's a patch over there. There's a patch over behind me that we found. Random act of carrot sprout. Yay! <laughs> this is amazing. I cannot believe we're actually going to have carrots. And I've got like six more sprouts in the greenhouse, so I'll pop them in here too. So this is officially the root vegetable plot. So behind me, everything is still in their pots um, from the greenhouse, but that's roughly how we're going to set it up. Most of these plants have four, two, so I'll be spreading them out, obviously, either side of those pots and leaving some space in between if we can manage it. We're going to plant our tomatoes deep and our peppers next to each other. I don't put anything in under my tomatoes, I just put the tomatoes in. Um, but we've got some good stuff going on. We've got that layer of compost um, and then this layer on top of it of the mulch which has been imbued with the compost. Okay, so let me show you something. See this guy coming out of the middle there? That is a sucker. And if we wanted to, we could pull that off and root it either in water or soil, put a dab of honey on it and stick it in that medium and it will grow roots. Um, so that also means that all summer long, I'm gonna be out here pulling suckers and possibly rooting more tomatoes, but we'll see. For now, I'm just gonna pinch these things off, doing okay, and pop them in the ground. I also want to show you the dibbler because this is really cool. Dibbler is sharp and pointy. It's, it is literally a stick with a handle. Um, and some of them don't even have handles. <laughs> and the point of this thing is to make a big hole. That's all of it. I'll show you. Oh, sweet Cheez-Its. Is there anything that smells nicer than like a tomato plant? Oh, holy cow. I'm planting a tomato forest and it smells fantastic. So you'll notice my rose. <laughs> I told you I was gonna plant the tomatoes deep and the peppers close. I'm planting the tomatoes deep and close because apparently on some of these little packs, I planted more than one per cell, so. <laughs> Um, I'm sticking some in the middle. Uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Tomatoes are in. It's starting to look like a proper tomato forest over here. And then we've got peppers and the tomatillos. And then down at the end, I put in some eggplant, three different kinds, a Turkish orange, a string eggplant, and a full-size Mitoyo eggplant. So, starting to come together. Beans and squash are going to go in there, and there's a little bit of space over there also. 
We're gonna get the cucumbers up on those trellises next week and go from there. So spent about four or five hours in the garden today and got dirt all over the place. Pretty fancy manicure. <laughs> Um, but it's coming together and I'm super excited. I put in some borage and some marigolds under the trellises near the, um, near the brassicas. They're my trap plants. So they're there to keep the pests off of the brassicas. Um, we'll see if it works. We'll see if it works. I've never done this before. Um, I've been gardening a long time and there are so many things that I have never done before. This is super exciting to have all these alliums in the ground and indeterminate tomatoes. What? I know zip about them. I didn't even know there were determinate and indeterminate tomatoes when I started this. Um, found that out this year. I think maybe I've been lucky and always had determinate tomatoes in my garden, but uh, kinda looking forward to pruning off suckers all summer learning new trellising techniques. This is, this is gonna be exciting. We'll have to see what happens. Well, it's almost dark and uh, it's just about time to get the chickens into their coop for the night, which yesterday was their first day out all day. So getting them into the coop was exciting. I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping it's way less exciting tonight. Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Poor little chickens. They are super confused, but they seem to really enjoy it. And today I gave them a pumpkin, so they ate a bunch of that. I'm hoping they're feeling satisfied and happy. Thanks for hanging out with me while I planted stuff today. Still got a whole bunch left that's got to go in. Um, we've got stuff that's going to harden off this week for next week's planting. And... A handful of odds and ends that I still want to get in. We got all the herbs in today, um, but there are still sunflowers that I want to put in. And what else is over there? We've got pansies, we've got gumfrena, um, all kinds of pretties. Still some marigolds left. I want to get them in as well, but that's for tomorrow. Tonight, dusk and chicken wrangling. <laughs> oh, here's Bill. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us today. <laughs> it was super fun. See, we're on the ground. We're the same height. <laughs> oh, but you're still like, oh, no fair. Come back. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with us in the garden today. We'll catch you up soon. Take care.